Hi everyone. Um, this tutorial will teach you how to do a multiple exposure for um, a stacked atop effect in your sequence photography. So here's the first photo um, I have of my dancer. And with each tutorial, I'm giving you one tip or trick um, for editing your photos um, simply using the Pixlr um, app. And uh, for this one, we're going to go over the adjustment hue saturation um, or actually let's do temperature and tint. You know what? We haven't done that one yet. And hue and saturation, I think we've covered in some of the um, selective color edit tutorials. So temperature and tint um, are just two ways if you want to warm up your photo, make it feel more um, sunshiny, or maybe you want to cool it down a little bit, um, depending on the vibe you're looking for. So if you go too strong in either direction, it's going to look pretty fake. Um, so I always like to say, as a rule of thumb, don't go beyond um, 20 um, on either slider unless you're aiming for something that does look a little bit fake or artsy and um, a little bit weird. Um, so I'm going to go with a cool tone of 17. And I'm going to also play with a purple tint. I kind of like a purple undertone to my photos of minus 10. I'm going to remember those numbers and I'm going to apply them to all of my photos. So hit apply, go to my next one in the series, adjustment, temperature and tint, add a cool tint of minus 17 and a, or a cool temperature of minus 17 and a purple tint of minus 10 um, and go through each of them like this. The reason we apply all the edits the same to each photo is so that there's consistency when they are stacked atop one another, and so we don't have colors that are contradicting one another once we are going into that double exposure. Um, we can also apply some of these edits at the end, and sometimes it makes a really, uh, really big difference. Um, but if it doesn't, um, it's great to do it before, especially if for example, you were cloning something out or eliminating something that was distracting in your photo, um, you want to do that to every photo before you put them in. Otherwise, it's going to um, show up in one and not in the others, and then that's going to stick out. You don't want anything that's going to stick out to your viewer and distract from your intended message or your intended subject matter. So my intended subject matter is the motion of this dancer's bar sequence. Okay, all right, so now all of them have had that single edit applied. I'm going to save each of them and download as JPEG. I'm going to keep my quality at 100% because these videos were all extracted from a slow mo video. So keeping my um, quality up as high as I can get it is going to be important to me. Um, my downloads are all happening down at the bottom, and so I'm going to be able to drag them into one document and stack them atop one another at the end of these downloads. I have six downloads here, and um, you can have more than that, you can have less than that. The goal is to show your, um, your movement as fully as possible and as detailed as possible, um, and trying to get crisp focused um, images. So this might not be the best method for capturing this dancer's bar, um, but we know that um, a lot of us don't have very many options during quarantine and social distancing. Um, many of us aren't allowed to go outside. Many of us are um, in apartments and don't have bright light coming in through windows. So this is a pretty realistic scenario for what your photos might look like. So instead of obsessing over things that are outside of your control, focus on what you can control, like what is in your picture, um, what you're doing in your picture. All right, so each of those has been downloaded, and now I'm going to bring up each of them in a layer. So I'm going to go plus, image, and I'm going to select the... Uh, Let's just double check. This is the one where she's ton doing devant. I'm going to select each one that has been downloaded that's not this file and hit open. Now they're all stacked on top of each other. I'm going to align them um, each 
to the same frame before I start. And if you did the double exposure with me, um, I didn't assign it uh, during distance learning. It was just something to do if you were bored when we were in kind of that limbo period. Um, but if you did that already, then you're golden because you already know what you're doing. So we're going to go to the top of the layer and choose the three dots to the left that says layer settings. I'm going to go to blend mode and I'm going to choose screen. And when I choose screen, I'm allowing all of the dark colors underneath to pass through um, into this image. Um, I can also try multiply, um, depending on the brightness of your image, um, one might work better than the other. Maybe some of them you want to choose multiply, some of them you want to choose screen. So play with the, around with this. So that top one has multiply. I'm going to choose screen for this second one and see that and then i'm going to go down to the layer below it click the three dots blend mode i'm going to jump back to multiply and going to go to the last one screen and so you are going to want to play around with this um, feature I think it might make sense to have the bottom ones all using multiply as the blend mode and not include screen until your top um, layer okay so I'm gonna leave the background one um, fully trans or fully normal blending mode um, so we don't want something that's blending through to a transparency and I'm gonna try on the top one instead see if screen Nah, don't like that. Um, okay, so you can choose between them. I'm going to go back and see if I like it with all of them as multiply. And it turns out I don't. I like screen better. Okay, now if you are looking at this and going, well, now I've kind of lost some of the detail in my images, um, then play around with it. Play around with your transparency too. So my transparency, maybe it gets um, less opaque as it goes down. So uh, maybe my top image, um, where her arms are above her, my transparency is set to 50. And my next image, my transparency is set to 60. Okay, now I'm starting to see a little bit more of each layer. Oh, that's the same one. Um, and then maybe my third one, my transparency is set to 70. And maybe my fourth one, transparency is set to 75 or 76. Um, okay, so each of these, I'm just playing around here to see what works. Um, I can also play with taking some out. Maybe some of them are messing up. Like if I look at that one, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference between those two. So maybe that layer just comes out all together. Um, so I can see some of these more distinct movements. Play around, um, see what works. I think this one needs to be a little bit more um, transparent in the middle. So what can we do there if I'm seeing too much of the dark colors? Well, I go to my mask, click paint, um, paint with a soft brush, and I can just paint out that middle t-shirt to reveal one of the t-shirts beneath. Um, so you can play around with masking, you can play around with transparency, and you can play around with blending modes. Um, at the end of all of that, you might want to apply different adjustments than you did at the beginning. Maybe I want to brighten up the whole thing. Ooh, maybe I don't. <laughs> uh, maybe I want to go in and bring up my shadows, enhance my shadows, or make them less uh, dark. Maybe I want to bring up my highlights too. Play around with it. Um, have fun. This one might be very, very creepy. You might have like multiple heads. You might have multiple arms. Um, but that's kind of the fun of it too. So good luck. Uh, stay safe. We can't wait to see what you guys are working on.